What's going on, everyone? Happy Saturday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully, you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I really hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Saturday edition of the Pandemic Update for Saturday, March 16th, 2024. That's right. It's just one day before St. Patrick's Day and oh, so risky not so safe COVID weekend for many people. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the pandemic update on all things COVID. We've been doing this since July of 2022 now. Yes, we've been doing this for quite some time. And if you follow my channel, you know this is where you see things such as COVID news, other viruses, really any virus that could be a threat to you. If you're new to the channel, subscribe down below. You want to stay informed with what's going on. Give this video a thumbs up if you like what you see. And if you want to keep more people informed, by all means, share these videos with anyone you know. You may have noticed, if you are a regular that looks for a video daily, we did not have a pandemic update yesterday. It was the first time we missed a day since November of last year. Going forward, I don't think it's going to be right for me to say daily pandemic update anymore when I start these videos. I'm not saying there won't be times where there's multiple days in a row where there is a pandemic update. There may be times where one or two days out of the week, there's no pandemic update. I think that's just, it's appropriate at this point in the game. I really didn't want to have to do this. Uh, personal reasons, rushing home to do an update sometimes. And then we do run into some days once again, which this happened last year in the spring, if I remember correctly. There were days where there was just not enough news and I'm repeating stuff. So on days that it's slow news, there may not be a pandemic update unless I find something. And from time to time, we'll still do out in the wild updates as well. Maybe there's something I want to have a discussion about that I'm seeing. By all means, we'll just add that onto the channel. And it may not always even be pandemic related. It could be something that's beneficial to you. So be mindful of that going forward. However, we do have quite a few things to talk about today. Because after all, there wasn't an update yesterday. And on days where we don't do updates, sometimes we do find that the next day, it ends up being a lot of stuff. So let's get into this. First off, some news. Then we'll take a look at some data, including CDC data. Our first story today is something that was posted to my site by uh, my moderator, Steve. And this is not a good thing. I mean, I'm glad he posted it, but what he posted is some bad news. So yesterday was International Long COVID Awareness Day. And well, with that, we got some more news on long COVID. Mind you, this is just children now. And I talked about this in my space last night. If you did not hear my space, you can go back and listen to my talk on my Twitter channel, which uh, there's a, on my Twitter page, I should say, there's a link to that down below. It was about an hour long. We had no one come up to the mic. There wasn't that many people, but hey, I got to talk. And if you want to go out and listen to that, by all means, it runs about a little bit over an hour. But we talked about this last night. So long COVID. And just kids in the United States is affecting 5.8 million children. Repeating, 5.8 million children in the United States now have long COVID. This is totally unacceptable. This is ridiculous. This doesn't even include adults, which, remember, the smaller number of people with long COVID is children. But, hey, 5.8 million, that is a ton of children. The actual count, if you include adults, runs somewhere between 16 and 17 million that we know of. It's likely much higher than that. It's probably closer to 25 million. But this is just ridiculous. How many people we have allowed to go on to get long COVID, and now we're finding out that it's 5.8 million kids. It says here, this study comes from February 2024, this year. A study published in February of 2024 has estimated that up to 5.8 million children in the United States has long COVID, a, symptoms, a collection of symptoms that persist after the initial COVID-19 infection has ended. The study also found that long COVID in children may lead to increased chance of developing type 1 diabetes. I've said this before here on the channel. I'm going to say it again. You do not want to go through diabetes. You do not want to go through type 1 diabetes. You don't want to go through bad diabetes whatsoever. I have a relative, an aunt, my dad's sister, 
several many years ago now. This is 2024. I believe she passed in 2004. I don't precisely remember. I think it was 2004. The point I'm getting at is her death was from diabetes. You do not want to experience bad diabetes and COVID. Even if you, let's just say you already have diabetes, not even just in kids, in adults as well. There are studies suggesting we actually have a section on the site, which I'm going to pull up right now, datareport.info. Look at this. We actually had to make a section. Now, there's four topics in there, but you get the point. It's just on diabetes, and that is likely to grow as we find out more about this diabetes linkage with COVID. If you have it, it can make it worse. If you don't have it, you possibly could get it. All right, moving on. We do have another story from... Uh, my website more long COVID, alarming rise in americans with long COVID symptoms gee i wonder why could it be we just had the second biggest wave of the entire pandemic over this winter let's read a little bit here some 6.8 percent of american adults are currently experiencing long COVID symptoms according to a new survey from the u.s centers for disease control and prevention reviewing an alarming increase in recent months, even as the health agency relaxes COVID isolation recommendations, experts say. Let's face it, the last story we just showed and this story, this really could be a video of its own, just on how nothing really makes sense right now. So the CDC knows that there's alarming rise in Americans with long COVID symptoms in recent months, keyword, recent months but yet the cdc relaxed its COVID guidance and made that change totally ridiculous let's read a little more here's the actual total that they suspect it could be and we know it's much higher that means an estimated 17.6 million americans could now be living with long COVID. yeah i'm pausing because this is just astonishing we're just allowing this to happen we're doing nothing we're doing nothing to stop this whatsoever we're just allowing it to happen in fact we're actually giving it the upper hand because we're making the guidance be well you know if you're fever free you can go out if you're fever free for 24 hours you can go out into the public but you have to wear a mask and you know they're not going to wear a mask they're not going to do that mask oh that was four years ago COVID's over Ugh. All right, enough of my rant. Let's continue on because we do have a lot to get through. Uh, Disney on Ice attendees warned of potential measles exposure. This is ridiculous. At Cincinnati performance. So there was a Disney on Ice in Cincinnati recently. And with that, there was an exposure to measles. And as you know, there were probably a lot of people at this. I'm trying to see here. Does it actually say how many people attended the show? I'm not seeing that listed here. You get the point. These arenas, they hold, you know, tens of thousands of people. This one probably holds somewhere between ten, maybe 15,000 people. That would be my guess. So, yeah, that's not good. Then we come over to this. And maybe this might lead to more rant. I don't know. Over one in three people affected by neurological conditions, the leading cause of illness and disability worldwide. Take a look here. This is from the World Health Organization. Let's try something here, shall we? I just did control F, which means search. We're going to search on this article. Watch, I want to show you something. Oh, look at that. We searched the word COVID, and look what comes up. Now, we're not going to read all this, but let's read some of this. This increase is in line with the worldwide increase in diabetes. Remember, we talked about that a little bit ago. Other conditions such as neurological complications from COVID-19. Get it? Yeah. COVID-19. It's being mentioned in a lot of different things as lately. Speaking of COVID-19, one good way of preventing COVID-19 is this. Look at this. Yesterday, we were doing a pharmacy delivery from a CVS in Horsham, PA. I often do pharmacy deliveries from CVS, sometimes Rite Aid as well. And check this out. CVS actually had a section back by the pharmacy where they had air purifiers. Look at this. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, ten, eleven, twelve, at least ten or twelve different air purifiers. That's telling me CVS knows what's going on. CVS knows, corporate world knows what's going on, but they really don't want to do anything to put a stop to COVID. I mean, CVS took the initiative to say, mm, if you know what's up, 
Here you go. But they're not advertising saying clean air is healthier air. Clean air helps prevent viruses such as COVID-19. We now have a section where you can buy air purifiers. You don't see them advertising that. Hey, if you're seeing an ad for it, let me know down below. I sure am not. All right, moving on now to this. We want to take a look at today's air quality. And let's see what the air quality values are today in the United States. Not terrible, but there are some areas that you should be concerned about, which is going to continue to be the case as we head into spring. Texas continues to have poor air quality in the eastern portion of the state. You can see down in Mexico. Look at this, the country of Mexico. There's some poor air quality down there as well. Taking a look at the west coast, you can see there are a couple problem spots in California and the Pacific Northwest, but it is not terrible. And the Northeast is really not that bad today. Great Lakes does have a few yellow areas, which is slightly concerning at this time. All right, taking a look at EMS calls in Philadelphia yesterday. There were 767 EMS calls on Friday, and we do need to scroll down here and see what the total calls were for Thursday. That was 792 doing that because we did not do it yesterday. There was no pandemic update yesterday. Taking a look at a live look in what's going on in Philadelphia. Burbs in Montgomery County, we can see here there are multiple respiratory calls and some other calls as well. Diabetic emergency, stuff like that. 13 EMS calls total right now at this time. Taking a look at what's going on in Chester County, Pennsylvania, and we can see here some strokes going on, some falls, seizures. So there are some calls we had, not terribly busy, Again, now taking a look at the Walgreens numbers for this week, and we will see that there was an ever so slight rise in Walgreens. Here it comes, 14.2% versus 14%. That rise is because testing is just down significantly. You can see there are 1,973 tests versus 2,567. Taking a look at hospital uh, capacity or wastewater excuse me we're going to do wastewater first then we'll look at some other cdc data later you can see here national wastewater trend is dropping at this time and when we come down here the number of red sites you know those 80 to 100 percent really high levels that's down 31 percent there's 41 of them the orange sites 60 to 79 percent there's still 244 of them that's down 18 percent though and the really light blue that's moderate uh, 40 to 59 percent that's down by eight percent but still 432 of them we want to see these dark blues increase big time that would be zero to 19 percent and that did increase by 20 percent we may have a wastewater update tomorrow stay tuned to my twitter you'll know via twitter whether or not i do a wastewater update tomorrow taking a look at biobot pretty much overall good news with one exception being the Northeast. And the Northeast is still dropping. It's just not dropping as fast this week. Uh, the Midwest, you're dropping a little bit faster. The South has slowed a little bit. And the West, still dropping, has slowed. But again, all regions of the United States at this time are dropping on Biobot. Taking a look at some more CDC data now. And you can see here, there are still some areas that have high wastewater levels. But we're not seeing any uh, very high wastewater levels on this map at this time. A lot of places have actually even dropped to low or moderate levels for COVID at this time. Now taking a look at the hospital data, which did not update this week. 76.6% of all hospital beds are being used, 1.8% for COVID, 1% for influenza. Hopefully we will get this to update again soon. Taking a look at the ICU situation, 71.4% of all ICU beds are being used. COVID-19 makes up 1.8% of that, and influenza is 1.2% of that. More CDC data now. Deaths are actually down 4.8% in the United States this week. However, North Carolina and Mississippi are still seeing some increases. Hospital admissions, big drop, bigger drop than the previous week. 13,391, still quite a few, but it's down by 13.5%. So that is good to see. You do still see some orange areas here. Still some areas that are dealing with increases from time to time. Again, the national trend. Don't always pay attention to the national trend. Say you live in, I don't know, say you live in Center County, Pennsylvania. So right now, Center County, Pennsylvania, we can see here, is dropping. Uh, say you live in Columbus, Ohio area. You can see in Columbus, Ohio area, it, Franklin County, Ohio, it's dropping right now. But then you live in one of these orange counties. This is what I'm trying to get at. You live in one of these orange counties where it's rising a little bit. 
guess what? If it's rising in your county, in your community, your town, guess what that means? Pay no attention to the national trend. Your local area is rising. Interestingly enough, look at Alaska. Much of Alaska is rising, and I would have to assume some of these uh, counties in Alaska, or boroughs, I guess they call them here on the map, uh, probably don't even have hospitals. But the overall Alaska hospitalizations are rising at this time. All right, continuing on here, taking a look at COVID-19 epidemic status, it's only likely growing in one state. That's Utah at this time. Everywhere else is either stable, uncertain, likely declining, or declining. Nowhere is in the growing stage. And when we take a look at what is going on with epidemic status for flu, we see it is likely growing in New Mexico, Nebraska, and Iowa. At this point, we now have nowhere where it is in growing, which is higher than likely growing. It's either stable or uncertain, likely declining, or declining everywhere. Taking a look now at what is going on with the latest variant update, which came in yesterday. Get this. JN.1 is below 90% now at 86.5%. JN1.13 is now at 9.5%. Yes, that grew. And JN.1.18 is at 1.8%. If JN.1.13 was to eventually take over, which it could, I don't think it's going to cause a significant wave, but what I think could happen is we'll likely probably see a leveling at some point where things aren't dropping anymore and we'll be bouncing off the bottom. We did that last year, and then around 4th of July, we started to have a wave again. I don't know when the next wave is actually going to start. We really need to watch what happens with uh, post-St. Patrick's Day, post-Easter. Easter's coming up soon, post-spring break, all these things. We'll have to see if that leads to anything happening. All right, this week's flu update. And we see here, nowhere is in this dark maroon color. That's right. Places are not in the dark maroon. Ohio has dropped this week. Now, it's still very high in Washington, D.C., Ohio, and Nebraska. But, again, just only three places. So, we're starting to see things drop with flu. And, perhaps, we may soon see... Uh, no areas in very high levels. We still do have a ton of areas that are in high levels, though, such as Arkansas, Oklahoma, New Mexico. We come up here to Wyoming, North Dakota. You get the picture. Michigan, Iowa, Rhode Island still on high. And then there's others that are in a slightly lower shade of high, which would be Massachusetts and New Jersey. And then even lower would be New York City, Virginia, Tennessee, a bunch of places in moderate and Look at this. There's a lot of places now that are low or even becoming minimal. So that is really good to see at this time. All right. New Jersey for today. 343 hospitalizations. 66 out of 70 hospitals reported. 19 people on a ventilator. Discharges. 60 discharges in the ICU. 50. Hey, ICUs are dropping. Take a look at New York State. 799 new cases. And the hospital situation in New York State today has dropped. 732 people in the hospital, 92 people in the ICU. Again, will we drop below 500 by the end of this month in New York State? I think we could. It's very well possible. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Saturday edition of the Pandemic Update. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. If you know anyone that needs to see these very important life-saving safety updates that help keep you safe from all the different viruses by all means share this video with anyone you know not certain if we're going to have another pandemic update tomorrow which would include a more detailed look at wastewater but of course stay tuned to my twitter you'll know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow whether i have an update or not all right i will see you all again next time until i see you again next time stay safe everyone and thanks for watching have a fantastic saturday afternoon Bye-bye.